Uh, good morning, everyone. I hope everyone is doing well. And uh, welcoming you to this webinar on ArcGIS Workflow Manager. Uh, Vivek, I hope I'm audible clearly. Yes, you are audible, Devan. Please continue. OK, thank you. So uh, before uh, moving ahead with the topic, uh, let me introduce myself. So my name is Devang Shinde, and I'm uh, working in Esri India as uh, the pre-sales manager, uh, mainly taking the uh, responsibilities for the West region. Uh, and that is why I'm based in the uh, Mumbai office of Esri India. And basically, I mainly look after the government and urban uh, activities and the uh, GIS solutions which are provided uh, for the government sector. OK, so. Let's move ahead with the topic. So in this webinar, uh, we will explore the capabilities and benefits of ArcGIS Workflow Manager in streamlining and automating your organization's workflows. Uh, managing complex workflows can often be challenging. So but with ArcGIS Workflow Manager, you can simplify this process. You can increase the efficiency and you can ensure the smooth collaboration across teams. So whether you are involved in emergency response planning or maybe land management, infrastructure maintenance, or any other domain, uh, you can use this and you can uh, get the great output out of it. So I hope this webinar will provide you with uh, valuable insights and practical knowledge. So Workflow Manager is a tool that helps businesses streamline and standardize their processes by converting them into workflows. It simplifies the management and tracking of tasks, whether they are in progress or temporarily halted due to issues. The system automatically records information for each activity and offers reporting tools to provide detailed information about each task. It also facilitates the allocation of resources and allows tracking of job status and progress. Uh, the tool includes email notifications to keep individuals informed about tasks assigned to them, tasks that have, have, that have been completed, and any edits made to spatial data. So ArcGIS Workflow Manager has uh, several provisions included in it. Uh, let's have a quick look uh, one by one. First is about standardizing the business process, which I mentioned earlier. So Workflow Manager will allow the businesses to represent the business process as workflows consisting of interconnected steps. So if you just imagine this will something look like a flow chart, but it will be having something more than that. So the tool ensures that tasks are organized and clearly defined, minimizing the chances of overlooking any step. So it offers a user friendly drag and drop interface, enabling authorized users to create efficient and visually appealing workflows. Uh, surely we will be having a look at it uh, once we are done with the introduction and about the uh, quick brief idea about the workflow manager. So these workflows can be designed for GIS implementation, non GIS processes as well, or a combination of both. Uh, based on the specific needs of the organization. Then comes the creation and the assignment of the work. So in Workflow Manager, a workflow is executed by creating a unit of work, which we call it as a job, which stores all the information required to perform and complete the specific task. The job can be created and assigned to an individual who is supposed to perform the initial steps in the workflow. The jobs can be executed by a registered workflow manager users only within an organization. So obviously everyone won't be uh, given the uh, right to create the job. Only the authorized people will be having the right to create or assign the task. The third one is of the tracking of the progress and the reporting. So the task which you have assigned that needs to be tracked obviously. So the jobs in Workflow Manager have a status associated with them throughout their life cycle. The status information is easily accessible for each job. By querying the job information, you can gather details about the individuals involved, the tasks performed, the timing, and the methods used for activities across all the jobs in your organization. 
Real time reports provide an overview of the jobs in the workflow manager repository, enabling you to effectively communicate information to stakeholders. So these reports can be executed on the desktop or via the workflow manager web services. So the process can be presented as a workflow using a series of steps connected by paths. So as I mentioned earlier, it will uh, similarly look like a flow chart, but it is actually a process. It is a task which uh, might have several people involved within the organization. So how exactly the workflow manager architecture works? Let's have a look at it. So workflow manager server is comprised of a capability server with instances of workflow manager available as workflow items. So there will be a component called as workflow items within the workflow manager, which will help you to create multiple jobs, multiple job templates as well, which we will be going to talk about it later. And accordingly, you can assign tasks to your uh, different members of the organization. So this allows different departments or groups in the same organization to have their own independent systems. A web app where users can go and perform their work to a new level of feature functionality and performance they have never had. An ArcGIS Pro extension that is streamlined and easy to use for those performing editing and analysis in ArcGIS Pro. So the workflow manager will also be accessible from ArcGIS Pro where you can run the tasks which are assigned to a particular user and you can get the results out of it. And we also offer APIs for extensibility opportunities for organizations who want to build their own apps and widgets on top of the architecture. Workflow manager server can be deployed either in a single machine or highly available configuration. So a highly available configuration can allow your organization to meet system uptime standards or simply add some peace of mind. So as you see here, you will get to see that Workflow Manager is accessible from ArcGIS Pro. You can also consume the web apps or the mobile apps as well. Mobile apps like ArcGIS Workforce, which can be embedded into the Workflow Manager and that can be accessed and accordingly the work can be assigned and get the job done. So let's now get into the topic of the workflows because as I mentioned workflow item is the component which is a part of workflow manager and that is where all the all the work begins. And you start the work by creating or designing the workflow. So the workflow diagram is the place where you will actually design the workflow and that is the most important part of a job. So it represents the process that a job will follow from start to finish. The connected steps in a workflow diagram are more than just a simple flow chart, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, when a step in the workflow diagram finishes, it can either proceed to the next step and automatically start it or stay active until someone finishes it. So there are several workflow patterns uh, like sequential. So sequential pattern is a very simple pattern where it is used for linear workflows where steps are placed one after another and is the simplest form of a workflow. This pattern should be used when there is only one path for how the workflow can proceed and where steps are completed in the order in which they appear in the workflow. Then there comes the looping pattern. So it is used for workflows that needs to return to a step that has already been run based on the result of a decision point or condition in the workflow. So very simple example is of a question. If suppose you want to add a step where you would like to have a question in between. If suppose there is a change of mind that you would like to change the defined location or maybe you would like to change the attachment which you have attached, then you can use such kind of a looping pattern. Then there comes the branching pattern. So branching pattern is used to create a decision point in the workflow with multiple possible paths. So uh, 
it results in the workflow proceeding down a single path based on the result of a step in the workflow. So this is quite similar to what the question based workflow will be. So in branching, if there are any two possibilities, then you can have two branches coming out of a one step. So if there is a result A, then you can go to the step B. And if there is a result X, then you can go to the step Y. Something like that. Then there comes the parallel pattern. So parallel pattern is similar to a branching pattern only, except that it results in multiple steps becoming active after the previous step. So this pattern is used when responsibilities of a job span across the multiple parties so that they can all work simultaneously. So as you see here, there are three steps involved at the same time so that that same kind of a job can be assigned to three different users and they all can work simultaneously at the same time. So that was about designing the workflows. Now comes the managing of the jobs. So managing jobs in Arcturus Workflow Manager is a key aspect of streamlining and optimizing organizational workflows. With its intuitive interface and robust features, the software provides a centralized platform for effectively assigning, tracking, and monitoring tasks. Users can easily create jobs, allocate resources, set priorities, and uh, define dependencies to ensure smooth progression through the workflow. So real-time updates and notifications keep stakeholders informed, enabling seamless collaboration between field and office teams. The ability to query job information and generate reports facilitates performance analysis and decision making. Overall, ArcGIS Workflow Manager empowers organizations to, eff uh, to uh, efficiently manage jobs. So as you see, here is a one quick snapshot of the manage page. So this page will be mostly used by the production managers or who are the decision makers so that they can have a quick glance on what is the current status of various jobs which have been assigned to different uh, members of the organization? What are the details of the jobs? Uh, by what date it is due? Uh, whether it is uh, uh, pending or not? Few things like that, which can give you the quick reports on the assigned tasks. Job templates. As till now, now we have just discussed about creation of the workflow, designing of the workflow, and the job assignment. But without job template, job cannot be assigned. So as the name suggests, job templates is basically comprised of several properties that will serve as the starting point for the different types of jobs that can be performed in Workflow Manager. So it will have multiple properties and where you can give the name of the job template and uh, who will be it assigned to and what will be its starting status, what will be its end status, and several other properties which are related to the workflow, uh, like workflow uh, the workflow diagram, then the job properties, then the extended properties. So workflow diagram, obviously, which will give you the provision of uh, creating the workflow and adding the steps. So that will be consisting of the steps and the process that the job will follow. Then comes the job properties. So job properties will be having the basic project management information, such as the uh, job schedule or the name of the job or the assigning or the description of the job and so on. Then comes the extended properties. So extended properties will be comprised of the custom properties. Uh, defined by an organization to facilitate additional information required for specific types of work. So uh, I hope you all must have seen that what all parts will be covered in the in the uh, mailer which was shared with you. So you can add multiple properties like if you would like to embed any survey one two three form or maybe you would like to embed any particular feature layer or any table, then all these kinds of properties can be uh, added into the extended properties. Uh, we will be having a look at it in the demo. So 
now we have reached the job templates. So in a workflow diagram, the steps are the uh, parts or the sections where you will be assigning different tasks at different levels. And there are very basic steps like uh, a start step, which will be the uh, beginning of the workflow. Then there will be like the manual steps, which can be done manually or simply giving the text description for a particular task. So these are the basic uh, uh, steps. So as you see here in the screenshot, first four steps are come. I mean, are coming into the category of general steps, uh, which are uh, mainly used in all the workflows which you will be creating. And then comes the advanced steps, which are actually the step templates, uh, which can be used for some advanced workflows like adding the attachment or creating a job or defining the location. So step templates are pre configured steps that perform different types of actions when a job is run, such as opening a map, running a geo processing tool, asking a question and so on. So each step template contains a default name and values for step properties, options and styling. When a step template is added to a workflow diagram, it becomes a unique step in the workflow and its default values can be customized as necessary. Now, as you have created the steps, you can also add the dependencies in the steps. Like if there is a step one and then comes the step two, you can put a step dependency on the step two, uh, which will be related to the step one, which will be the previous step. So that uh, unless and until the step one completes successfully, the step two won't be able to begin. So these are the kinds of dependencies or similarly, you can also add the dependencies at the job level. So job dependencies will allow you to create relationships between jobs that determine the order in which related jobs need to be completed. So when a department, uh, so, so when a dependent job is uh, added to an uh, existing job, it temporarily restricts the job from progressing while work is performed in the dependent job. So again, in the dependencies as well, there are some patterns which are uh, commonly used. And there are patterns like sequential, <clears throat> parallel and staggered. So sequential pattern will be used where one job cannot be started until another job is completed. Then parallel uh, pattern is where two or more jobs are dependent on each other and none can be closed until all are completed. Then comes the staggered pattern where a job cannot start until another job reaches a certain step in its workflow. Automation is one such feature which will make your job easier, especially in case of where there are multiple jobs which you are going to handle and there are multiple people who are over there on field who are working. So in that case, automation helps a lot. Automation and task assignment are crucial components of ArcGIS Workflow Manager that will uh, be helping you to streamlining your process and optimize the efficiency. So with automation, a repetitive and time consuming tasks can be automated, uh, which will reduce a manual effort and also improve productivity. So workflow manager will allow for the creation of predefined workflows where tasks are automatically assigned based on defined rules and criteria. And uh, this will eliminate the need for manual task allocation and it will ensure that the right resources are assigned to the right task. So once the ArcGIS workflow manager is configured within your uh, organization's ArcGIS enterprise, there will be several users which, uh, which will be added to your workflow manager. And then accordingly, as per the uh, requirement, the tasks will be assigned automatically to different users. So you will have to configure that that which particular task needs to be uh, 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 I mean needs to be assigned to whom. So there are uh, 
creation of jobs, which can also be done by using webhooks. Uh, mainly, you can also create the uh, jobs automatically with the help of the survey one two three form. So for example, if there is any person on field who is filling up the survey by using the mobile app of survey one two three. Once he submits the survey, the job will automatically get created in the workflow manager and then the people uh, in the office or the. Uh, I mean, who are not there on the field, they can start working. Uh, on that particular job. Similarly, uh, there can also be webhooks which can be consumed from uh, the third party webhook service URL providers. By using them, you can also have the automation of jobs getting created. Uh, but please note in this case, this functionality of automation will require a license for the ArcGIS Workflow Manager Server Advanced Tool. So that needs to be configured separately. Uh, integration with ArcGIS Workforce and also with the web applications is possible in ArcGIS Workflow Manager. Uh, if you know the ArcGIS Workforce mobile app, which will help you to assign the tasks and uh, uh, work to the people on the field, that can be done through Workflow Manager. So you can simply add the URL of the ArcGIS Workforce uh, application and on a at the same time, you can also add the web application URL, which you must have created on maybe Web App Builder or maybe any custom application which you must have created. And if you would like to perform uh, operations like uh, digitizing or maybe um, printing a map, or maybe you would like to run a widget which you have already configured in your application, you can perform all these tasks within the ArcGIS Workflow Manager. So these all uh, provisions are available with ArcGIS Workflow Manager. And I think. Now we can have the actual look at the demo. Let me switch my screen. Can you just confirm if my screen is visible? Yes, Devan, please continue. Thank you. So, I hope you all must be uh, well aware of the ArcGIS Enterprise. And ArcGIS Enterprise is the uh, basically the combination of ArcGIS Server. Portal for ArcGIS web adapter for both Portal for ArcGIS and ArcGIS server and the ArcGIS data store. So this is the home page of ArcGIS Enterprise. And from the app launcher, which is on the top right, you can get the workflow manager icon once the workflow manager has been uh, installed and configured. So you can simply launch it from here and it will get opened on the second tab. So this is how the. Home page of ArcGIS Workflow Manager looks. You can create multiple workflow items here. By giving it some name. And this is how uh, the workflow item gets created. Mostly. At the production level, what is um, uh, preferred is that for each project you can have different workflow items and in within wo one workflow item you can have multiple jobs. So let's go to the workflow item named as land records. So today for an example, uh, we will be using the example for land records. Where we have taken the task of uh, starting from the limestone marking, which we call it as tuna marking on the field till the generation of the property card. So how that workflow can go 
for the people on the field and even for the people who are working in the office who might be involved in the digitization work as well. So the whole combination we will try to show in the workflow manager. But before going into that uh, complex workflow, let's have a look at the whole interface so that uh, you can get well versed with the operability of the workflow manager. So as you enter into the workflow item, manage page is the first page which you will see, which will mainly uh, look, I mean, uh, uh, which will appear with a map as well as with the list of all the jobs. And on top you will see there are mainly three tabs, design, manage and work. So as we mentioned uh, earlier that in the manage page, you will get to see the quick information about about all the jobs which have been assigned or which are pending or which are active. And you can also have a list in the form of my jobs or maybe there are any jobs which are assigned to your group. Or maybe and you can also have a look at all jobs. So as you see when I switch to all jobs, you will see the changes happening on this pie charts. Uh, you can also filter them on the basis of the map extent. And you can see the quick numbers of how many total jobs are there currently working and which ones are new and how many are overdue. And from here you will have a quick look at uh, what all types of job are currently there in the system. Here you will be able to see the details about the jobs on the basis of its status, whether it is ready or maybe it is uh, overdue or maybe it is completed. And there is also one more pie chart on the job priority. So currently we see that there are two jobs with low priority. So this is how you can uh, get the details. On the right hand side, you will get to see all the details for that particular job. So uh, at which step we are currently lying, what is its priority, to whom it is assigned, uh, what is the type of the job, what is the status, the scheduled due date, etc. Again, then if you switch here, you can see or maybe you can add some comments. You can simply type the comment. And that comment will get added. This will help you uh, if any particular user or in the member within the organization would like to add some more details, which can be. Uh, kept forwarded to the people who will be working further on a particular workflow. Here you can have a quick look at the uh, uh, diagram and also if there are any locations assigned here or maybe if you have drawn any particular location digitized, you can quickly have a look at here. If there are any attachments or files added, you can have a look at it here and also you can download the attachments if it is required. Notes is something similar to comments. And these are all about the holds. If you would like to keep the job uh, on hold or if you want to block any particular step in case of any 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 issues, you can add them here. In case if the job is getting stuck, or maybe you would like to delete it. You can delete it from here. And here is the refresh for your job. If you see on the left hand side, you can quickly search for any jobs. Now here I have just opened one job. Maybe two jobs are there currently in the system, but uh, if there are multiple jobs, you, uh, you can simply search by typing here. And you can create a new job from all these job templates. Now let's go to the design tab. This is where actual designing of the workflow begins. So you can see on the left hand side, the first one is about the diagrams, then the job templates, templates and settings. So in diagrams, you can simply click create new. Whenever you click create new, start step will be the first step by default in 
every workflow and without the start start one you won't be able to save any particular workflow so you will need to have the start step and then you can further start with any steps you want to add so as i mentioned earlier in the presentation uh, you can simply drag and drop so i just dropped it here when you click this here you can add the step name you can add the user prompt like uh, So you can add the user prompt here and here you can add which will act like a welcome note something like this so in the manual step you will also get to see the options I mean, not only in the manual step, in any step you are going to add, these four tabs will always be there. In options, you can decide whether you want to keep the step as manual or maybe automatic or maybe run on a schedule. So when you run on a schedule, you can keep it waiting for a period of a time and you can also set the offset or maybe you can. Uh, uh, schedule the time for that particular step and accordingly you can design the workflow so in uh, in in options if i go to manual you can also have the option of keeping it optional so what does that mean is if you are keeping it optional you can simply skip that step and go ahead but uh, if you uncheck it you will have to uh, click it manually and then only you can proceed. In automatic, you can, uh, it, it will get automatically proceeded. Like you don't have to click the proceed button in the workflow and it can simply go to the next step. So this is how you can simply drag and drop. And while dragging, you have an option of simply keeping the step here and then connecting it like this. Or maybe you can simply drag it like this and place it on this arrow and it will get directly connected. So that is how the designing of the workflow works. I will not save this for time being. Let's have a quick look at the job templates. So whenever you create a new job, uh, uh, the new workflow diagram, once you save it and once you activate it, it will ask you for creating the job template for that particular job. So for example, the land records uh, workflow, which we are going to follow for this, this particular job template we have created. So this is the job template name. You can add the summary. You can add its state of the job template, active draft or retired, because you can also keep any particular a job template as a draft whether it is still in progress to be designed and to which particular diagram it is connected so it is connected to this land uh, land parcels process diagram and in what format every new job will get created so for that you can put it here so for every new job it uh, gives the name as land underscore records underscore 0, 01, 0, 02, 0, 03. I mean, whatever the number is, it appears in the form of the index. To whom you would like to assign it, you can put it in advance. And here you can have a quick look at the review of the, uh, the uh, workflow diagram. Again, if you would like to run the particular job for a particular set of time, I mean, for a particular span of time, you can uh, put the start date and put the end date. So only for only between that period, the job will run. 
then comes the interesting part of the extended properties where i mentioned you can add some more uh, additional information from the organization so you can link a new table you can uh, add the existing table you can add the feature layer survey one two three form so this is the form which we actually i mean this is actually the uh, uh, survey one two three form which we tried to uh, link it here and automatically it has uh, populated all the related fields for the particular survey similarly you can add the feature layers and the tables as well sharing we have shared it with everyone and automated actions so you can have a scheduled task so you can name that particular schedule the same way we do the task scheduler we use the task scheduler on windows so how frequently you would like that job to be done and this is where the basic level of automation begins you can repeat it one i mean each day at a particular time or maybe you can repeat it weekly monthly yearly so accordingly you can set the time and the job will run automatically on those particular intervals then there is the provision of adding webhook where you will have to uh, mention the url of that service the third party webhook service url and here you will have to give the credentials and the key which will you be getting from the uh, a third party uh, service provider here you can uh, design the email template so if there is any particular task where you would like to receive an email on completion of a particular job for that you can design a template to whom the email to be sent and what will be its subject the subject can be des uh, designed on the basis of the job name which has been assigned and for this particular thing you can use the arcade expressions which you can simply get it by clicking here so you can under job properties you can get the job name you can get the job id so whatever dynamic uh, 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 value you would like to have in a in, in subject or maybe in the body for that you can use the arcade expressions similarly in the body as well we have tried to add the uh, job comment which maybe any particular user must have added as a job comment for that particular job that will get reflected in the body of that email and the last is about the administrative part of the workflow manager where you can control what all types of roles can be assigned to different users of the workflow manager then currently uh, you are part of which workflow group and how many different types of groups are there and for each group what all roles will be enabled so groups can be created on the basis pieces of the groups which you have created on your arcgis enterprise and later you can assign different groups different roles like if you want to assign the advanced role which is with the uh, highest uh, privileges you can uh, you can give it to a particular group and you can finish it similarly the roles as well will give you the idea about uh, what types of privileges are given to different roles so as if you see in groups for each group there can be different roles given and for each role you have a control of what all types of privileges can be enabled so for workflow administrator obviously he is the admin so he will have almost all the privileges enabled 
for advanced there are few less than what we have for administrator and for basic like for assigning a job group or for assigning uh, the job to an individual all these tasks can be handled at the basic level of uh, uh, at the basic role here you will have to enter the all the configuration settings for the email notifications and then shared searches shared charts the charts which we saw on the manage page you can design them here if you would like to have a, a different color combination you can change the color ramp here so that's all about the design tab and the last one is the work tab where you will actually get to see the working of the job so by uh, on the time constraints i would like to directly show you the land records process so what i did is i am creating a new job which has been named as land records 39 so here i am accessing to the different job templates and with the help of job template i am creating a new job so here we will start with the workflow so the first step is of limestone marking uh if we know the people on the field are going to start on a particular date the process of limestone marking we can start the step which will be the manual work obviously and you can add a comment to it by 28th june for example today is 27th and you can proceed now it will take you to the drone data capturing again this is a manual job to be done on the field by the uh, drone operator so we will start with the step once the drone data has been captured it will be uh, given by the field team to the uh, responsible person who will be working on the author rectification of the data so for author rectification if uh, he is using the site scan for arcgis which is another uh, a product from esri where you can work on the drone data very efficiently then for that you can simply click here and it will redirect you to the site scan for arcgis by using his credentials he can log in and proceed with the work and once the work is done he can mark it as complete now in this particular step i have not enabled the option of commenting you can also add the option of commenting and if that person once the author rectification is done in site scan he can add the comment that uh, maybe if there are any issues face he can add the comment that uh, uh, the abc issues were observed in the uh, drone data something like that he can add and proceed it so in this workflow the next step which we have kept is of defining the job location now we have received the author rectified image and now by using that same image by adding it in the web map we want the people on the field to start the digitization by using the field maps app on their tab or on the mobile so for that we need to assign a particular location or maybe a particular land parcel where, which uh, where they need to perform this task so we can simply uh, go to any particular 
particular land parcel. Now let's suppose this is the land parcel 231 where we would like to assign the task. You can click it here and you can proceed. So now we know the person on the field has been assigned with the parcel ID 231 to finish the digitization of the land parcel. But now if there are any changes you would like to make or maybe you get to know that already another person is already working on that land parcel and you would like to change the location. You can click yes. Want to change the location? So yes. So it will take you back to the step of defining the location. So this this is where the branching pattern of the designing of the workflow comes into picture. Where you will change the location. We will switch to 230 parcel ID and we will proceed. Now again, it will ask you. So this is the loop which has been created. But now you are sure that okay, you don't need to change it. So you will click no. And then you it will take you to the next step. Here it will ask for the work order. So you can simply uh, access to your uh, local drive and you can simply attach. So you can add any any document if you if you want to if you want to uh, have the restrictions on the formats of the document you can also add that you can have only PDF or maybe only Excel file. So attachment of the work order has been completed. And now here comes the integration with the ArcGIS workforce. So now there are multiple field workers which are uh, involved in this task. And I want to assign the particular task to a particular member. So as you see here, I have already assigned this uh, task of digitizing the land parcel uh, for one of my colleague Kunj. So the task has been assigned already. You can again check uh, whether the details are correct. And you can click finish. So once you are assigning the work. Through workflow manager. Now two things are happening. The location has been defined already in the uh, workflow manager. In your workflow managers job and at the same time the work has been assigned to the person who is there on the field through the workforce app. Now the person who is there on the field will start digitizing the land parcel using the rover. So the rover, uh, the rover will be uh, uh, connected to the field maps app which will be giving almost the 99% level of accuracy and by using that the digitization can be done using the field maps on the field itself. Once that step has been completed. We will reach to the last step, which is of printing the property card. Now I am showing you the whole process uh, quickly, but obviously this whole process takes a lot of time and been, I mean it might take even months. So you can keep that particular job on hold or maybe you can keep it on pause. And accordingly, the decision makers can have a look at it in the manage tab and they get to see that particular job number 39 is currently at this status. And here comes the integration with the web applications. You can simply click the next step and it will redirect you to the web application where you can actually do the running of any widgets or maybe now in this particular example, 
printing of the property card. Just a moment, let me sign in again. So we went for the parcel number 230. Currently, I have kept a very simple uh, printing widget. Maybe we can have a landscape. Just a moment. Uh, sorry for this glitch. Actually, I clicked it somewhere. And I need to create the job again. So the ultimate step was off. Uh, printing of the uh, map from the web, web application and you can get the uh, job completed which was the last step and you will uh, get these details about the job in your content so the I mean the location which has been defined in the job for that particular feature layer will be created. And accordingly you can have the look at it. So. Here you can see this is the particular workflow. Which has been created in workflow manager and that gets added as an item. In your my content and. At the same time, you will also have multiple uh, feature layers getting created if there are locations defined and if there are any uh, uh, details added pertaining to the jobs. So here, as you see, this is one example where uh, uh, the the uh, location was defined and uh, the am i audible uh yes you are audible yeah i think uh, the internet went away for the time being So as you see here, uh, this is the location assigned for the particular job. So similarly, if there are multiple locations assigned for a particular job, you will get to see them in the form of polygons or maybe points or lines. And you can have a have the all the attributes related to it. Like what is the job ID, job name. and uh, to with whom the uh, job was owned and who created it and you can also export it in the form of uh, excel table so yeah so that was all about the workflow manager uh, in the example of land records process similarly you can also have uh, non gis workflows as well like uh, you can have uh, the submission of any permit permit document or the acceptance of permit document. 
these kind of processes can be performed. That's it from my end, Vivek.